Thank you. Uh, next, I would like to invite Mohan Shivam, who is the co-founder and CPU at Pro Mobility. And he's going to talk about the uh, use of a neural network. So good morning everybody, uh, I'm super pumped to be here, one partly because I'm meeting all the community folks. Another, my dad studied here in 19, uh, I think graduated in 1982, so uh, this is the first time I'm coming to the campus and giving a talk, so it's kind of personal for me. Um, so uh, I'm Mohan Serum from uh, Flow Mobility. At Flow Mobility, uh, we are working on building um, vision-based autonomous outdoor robots, uh, to the kind of area quite a lot of uh, uh, recent research work has been going on. Uh, there is a clear, mature, existing indoor navigation pipeline uh, that most of the industries use. But the whole outdoor navigation is still uh, open research problem. There's a lot of problem being solved. So uh, there are like a bunch of very ambitious engineers uh, trying to put our heads, soul, blood, sweat, everything to make something work uh, in their space. So this uh, this call, this talk, uh, I actually wanted to cover over uh, the kind of uh, approaches we took uh, to solve these vision problems, right? So, uh, like, uh, generally the system software is one big headache, you know, get, uh, running a process in CPU, GPU efficiently, getting the best out of hardware is one headache. While the other headache is that, how do you think uh, to, uh, you know, design an AI pipeline to solve a specific problem? such as navigation, navigating the robot outdoors. So I wanted to cover up uh, what we tried to do, uh, what are our experiments, uh, what are the results of that, what is our learnings, and how do we plan to take it forward uh, from there. So uh, like I told you, um, the goal at Flow Mobility for us is to build the vision-based navigation stack, uh, which means uh, we don't use any expensive um, so from the beginning, we think of scale, right? So uh, we want to build the affordable stack that is scalable, where you can, uh, you know, you can, you can actually see a, a roadmap to in more than a million robots uh, in the next three to five years. So delete uh, as much complex systems, delete as much uh, complex supply chain sources, delete as much expenses and trust from the stack as possible. So uh, our uh, our goal is like remove lidar out of the equation remove depth cameras out of the equation, uh, try to use, uh, not use any NVIDIA stack uh, because it, it has big price tag. So in essence, build a, a complete end to end navigation suit with software, hardware, all the sensors required that cost less than $500. And uh, so investors uh, so do ask uh, our company, like, why, why are you doing this? Like, you know, just why don't you just use a leader? So, we just have this de facto solution in the future. <laughs> so, um, but uh, really, if you see, look, look into it. Um, neural networks can basically learn anything. It's it's end of the day problem of the data and data engineering. So they they can learn things beyond human understanding. Uh, you can just leverage uh, that powerhouse uh, to solve a lot of corruption problems. Right? And uh, neural net networks act as a very good uh, function approximators and abstractors. Um, uh, with uh, typically a simple problem that would require a huge compute in classical approach. You can just train a neural to do it and then run at like fraction of compute at, at a much higher uh, frame rate. And, and as we know, cameras are cheap and uh, they are very reliable. Uh, it's not like a, a new sensor in the town, like LIDARs are, or cameras are like, you know, they are there in most of the cars that we drive. Uh, they've, been, they've been around for a long time industry has matured in that, the cost of them are very low, we need to source. So uh, we're cutting off a lot of headaches uh, with hardware by just using cameras. And uh, and end of the day, neural nets are just software. It's not like you have to have a hardware to run it. it. It can run on CPU, GPU, DSPs, FPGAs. Uh, we, we can actually design, I mean, write code to make it run anywhere you want. And it, it generally requires less compute comparatively to the uh, 
your classic approaches. So uh, now that we have a clear goal, so we need to build a sub-500 dollar uh, uh, vision-based navigation stack. Uh, the next, we have to choose uh, in that broad range of problem what you want to solve. So we build outdoor autonomous robots. Generally, there's uh, you know in semi-controlled area, small and slow moving, not for you know commercial or passenger like cars or trucks, but for things like lawn mowers, you know cleaners, um, you know sprayers for agricultural uh, use case and, and those kind of things. So the problem that we need to solve there uh, in navigation stack is mapping, localization, and automation. We'll dive a little bit deep into that. So first. Uh, problem uh, that, that we started our experiments on. Uh, this is a little uh, close to a year ago. Um, is uh, how do we do mapping? Uh, because uh, this is the, in order to answer the question, where you are, we didn't have a reference, right? So the reference is the map, and the where you are is localization. So uh, if you're using cameras, uh, your typical, you know, shoot the laser, get the depth, uh, you know, a point that and then run a slam and build a occupancy map is not going to work. Uh, we need to figure out uh, different ways. Okay, so there is a first person view camera. How can we actually um, make a neural net learn what, what is like the occupancy of maybe a place like this? Um, so we, we always come back to how humans think, right? Uh, how, how do we uh, you know, identify what is occupancy of the space? Even, even if it goes one of the eyes, even if you don't have like a steel setup, uh, we can just look at the you know hall and then see hey so these areas are free and these areas um, you know there are people sitting in there are spaces over there potential robots can move it's because we're trained uh, about the three germ since we are born like once we are born you know we mostly don't know anything our, our eyes are our eyes are sensor are there and there's a bunch of actuators uh, you actually learn uh, babies kind of learn moving their hands touching things you know uh, trying to and turn around, crawl. So there's a good two, three years of uh, uh, you know uh, reinforcement learning happening. Uh, that it's trying to do something, it doesn't happen. So you can see the evolution uh, of their uh, geometric intelligence. Like at, when they age three or four, they pretty much know how to hold object, pick it up, manipulate it. So it, it's actually learning 3D geometry, right? So if we could teach neural nets to learn 3D geometry. Uh, that can actually solve a bunch of problems, and one of them you can actually get a cost map, uh, some kind of real real time cost map, on which you can build uh, a further global or local map. So uh, what we did is uh, uh, we built an end-to-end -end pipeline. Um, it, it's very nuanced, but I will try to keep it as abstract as possible. Uh, where we built a hardware uh, system that can actually acquire a data at scale. Uh, we put it on a robot, we put it on uh, our cars, or bikes, whatever our engineers can get. And then we collected one of the largest off-road data set of any kind. Um, arguably, in the world, definitely one of the top five largest data sets, definitely larger in India. And it's, it's about many dozens of TVs. And then we use that data through a photogrammetry uh, slash nerve pipeline to recreate uh, geometries of whatever area that cameras and the sensor stack have traversed through. And then we extract the depth out of it at every camera point of view, every frame point of view. And then we train the neural net to directly predict depth out of a single RGB image frame. So uh, it, it, it was very easily said. Uh, this is one of the most intensive engineering work that we have done. Uh, probably uh, best of work of our life for quite a lot of our engineers uh, to take such massive, diverse, unorganized data set from <coughs> India in the streets, uh, in the streets, in the field to do the reconstruction. Uh, the amount of server compute and a lot of optimization we have to do. We have done like many, uh, you know, uh, dead end hills, trying to do a lot of overnights to get this up and running. And we finally managed to uh, get, get, get a more uh, reasonable uh, weights with a reasonable learning rate. And then, uh, yeah. Yeah. So you guys can see here that uh, all we have is like a kind of a fisheye, wide-angle fisheye RGB frame on one end, and uh, that is all the neural net takes. And the neural net spits out, uh, you know, high-resolution depth. Uh, this is about 255 to 250 
optimum device, so the resolution uh, in a 2D plane is quite high. Um, and then we convert that into uh, what we call neural cost map. It, it's basically your uh, you know laser scan data extracted out of that. Uh, and then we used that laser scan uh, information to create further maps that's required to do either slam and map and then localize on existing map. Then uh, we started working on localization. I would invite Adi uh, to talk more about it. Hello, everyone. Uh, so as you all know, localization is basically a task of uh, knowing where the robot is. Uh, so for localization, like uh, if you see like in our uh, uh, robot, the sensor stack is pretty minimalistic. Uh, there is a low cost camera that is a monocular camera, uh, rolling shutter, and there's a low cost uh, MEMS uh, IMU. Uh, both uh, have pretty noisy data. So using that setup to uh, do localization is quite challenging. So we have explored quite a lot of approaches to uh, do localization with that. So if you can consider the classical approaches such as uh, they has, uh, have uh, take Harris corners or uh, or feature to build a map and localize against that. Uh, those approaches we have tried. Uh, but the problem what we face with those approaches is that uh, first is that uh, it's not that robust against uh, changing uh, environment condition, uh, changing lighting condition, scene is dynamic, things are moving. So that uh, with that, like with uh, those uh, issues, uh, some challenges are uh, still remaining in those areas. So here in the video, what we are seeing is the is a localization based on something called uh, April tag that is basically a judicial marker which can place around the environment uh, to lo localize against it. So for localization, we uh, for judicial markers, we use a classical April tag stack. Uh, but again, uh, we have the rolling shutter camera the motion, there is uh, quite a bit of motion blur. So detection is challenging. So we also explored uh, learning based approaches to detect that. And, uh, uh, the learning based approach basically uh, works pretty decent uh, in say in presence of motion blur. So in localization, uh, this is a kind of uh, uh, and it, and with the tag uh, we already like pre map the area with the changing environment is not uh, affecting much. So it's quite reliable and robust. Uh, odometry is basically uh, uh, in the same line as of localization. It's basically a task of estimating uh, uh, local pose of the, like uh, locally consistent pose and the velocity uh, of the robot for short duration. So uh, that is also pretty challenging for our kind of sensor setup because uh, for, from monocular camera, as you know, uh, there is something called scale ambiguity. So you can estimate. Uh, the how it moved, but uh, estimating the scale of that motion is pretty challenging. So here, here also the same way, uh, learning based approach can understand the semantics of the scene and help us solve the scale ambiguity. Yeah. So this setup is uh, like uh, output you are seeing is from a classical approach uh, that has scale ambiguity. But again, uh, from the data set that we collected and trained the model to do that, we are able to overcome the scale ambiguity problem. So, uh, in this, like, what we, we just highlight, like, the most successful experiment, of course, uh, across mapping, uh, localization, and odometry. Uh, there's like dozens of approaches we took. Uh, we put a lot of GPU hours, uh, did a lot of data collection, a lot of data engineering. Uh, it took almost good eight to ten months uh, to do all these experiments and kind of build a more deeper insights. Okay, how how should we actually solve uh, these vision problems? Now, the last uh, like approaches we took over a year, uh, there is like separate systems, uh, complete system, system, uh, separate vision pipelines for mapping, localization, and odometry. 
and uh, we try to put them all together uh, and, and make a few prototypes of uh, outdoor navigation stack. Um, it did work, but uh, did we end up uh, using all this tech? No. Um, uh, uh, like it's, it's a lot of, uh, for engineers you know, like six months, seven months, ten months, you're doing experiments. And when it comes to the robo stack, uh, you, you actually go with a lot of hypotheses. Like there's only very few things you can actually experimentally figure it out in terms of vision, training pipe, these are high gestation experiments, right? So there's data collection, engineering, training, monitoring the training, then doing deployment on the hardware. This is like a very high gestation period. So uh, what's important here, if you're an early stage startup with limited funding or you know, researcher, is developed intuitions and insights. And how do you, uh, your uh, intuition to build a, a, a more practical vision pipeline uh, than you know, like we do in computer, classical computer, like actually experiment it and then figure it out. So uh, w the issue with this piled up multiple neural nets doing multiple things is that uh, they have accumulated errors. So all of them do have specific uh, broad range of errors and when you uh, build a system together, just like how you do cl a classical system, right? So there's sep you separate it to slam, then you separate it to odometry, and then you try to mix them uh, with various kinds of filters, and then uh, somehow you have better covariance and error modeling and make it to work. But that does not work like that when you use neural networks as a multiple stack. And the stack itself is complicated because there's, there's quite a lot of integration effort, uh, and, and every model has a complete different data engineering pipeline. The amount, the how you are basically spreading yourself thin, uh, and the learning that we got out of it is that it's not very efficient uh, to use neural nets to solve an intermediary step of an existing classical problem. Like we cannot split, if you want to build a navigation stack, you can split like, hey, there's mapping, there's localization odometry. The learning is that you have to solve the end functional function directly. So uh, like the, the uh, industry examples uh, that uses this approach or the school of thought is what I can see is Tesla and Coma AI. So Tesla's FSD, the way it works is that all they do is take the nine cameras and IMU information, send that whole frame into neurons, and the neural nets predict all the uh, all the classes, humans, and and the state of the humans, all the uh, signal poles, stop cones, uh, all the lanes, signs, carts, trucks as a single output, it's a multi-headed network, right? So all, all the, uh, you know, predictions are, are intermediary inside the network layer, uh, instead of having as completely separate neural net systems, independent doing it, and write a classical uh, layer on top of it, a computing layer to uh, merge them together. And the same with uh, OpenPilot, all they give is like, given an image frame, how the car should drive, what's the trajectory of the car, which is like an end-to-end -end. And uh, we are actually going to plan a roadmap uh, as we move away from these uh, intermediary neural nets solving the classical problem to an uh, uh, end-to-end solution. And we are super excited to share these in the next uh, coming meetups, how, how those experiments went. For all these uh, things that we did in the last one year, I really have to give credit uh, to a platform and OS uh, for building the right hardware for us to do all these experiments. As you can see, these are like tons of uh, data collection, a lot of effort goes into it, storage, uh, data prep and processing. And which would have not been possible if uh, our platform team have built this uh, flow edge one for this. Um, shameless promotion, uh, one uh, is actually an AI search and deployment platform. It's based on Snapdragon 845. Uh, which is actually used in Comma AI as well. The Comma 3 that's released, uh, they also use the same chipset. It's basically a, a pre-integrated uh, compute, uh, compute sensor and communication setup uh, with all your, um, you know, data throttling, data pipeline problem solved, abstracted APIs. Uh, you can just get it, use the APIs, write your scripts to store data, write scripts to run your any uh, neural net model. Uh, they, they do collect, send their data to over internet with LTE with your servers and then do whatever kind of edge inferencing you want out of the box. Like you don't have to build any of these pipelines by yourself, all APIs are already available. 
and it has all the sensors that you need. It has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, um, you know, high quality IMU, uh, 12 MP cameras on board with all the LTE and GPS connection. So that's sufficient enough to most of your, uh, you know, vision problem, build your vision problems in these areas. And, and this is also, uh, we also uh, benchmarked it uh, with Geek, uh, Geekbench 5 score, and uh, it, it actually stands toe to toe to NX. And uh, the, the pitch is like it's a, a Xavier NX compute at uh, depth and nano cost. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And, and so uh, you guys can reach me out there and uh, know more about our computer at edge.com. Thank you. Thank you, Mohan. So I think you guys have already got uh, the word of coming here. Like you've got a very good learning where these guys took a lot of money and time to have invested in the learning from your and you guys have already got. So thank you. Uh, so next uh, we have.